Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Jurassic World Evolution 2 where today we are going to be discussing the free update for Jurassic World Evolution 2 that recently came out with the inclusion of the Feather Dinosaur Pack which also featured this giant duck that is Dino Karras, but since we already did a video on this guy along with the other four creatures and a few things that came along with them, we're gonna have to leave this guy behind and then go and deal with them. So let's get on to the free update. Now before we continue on guys with the video, I do want to announce a new little challenge thing that will be part of every video with Jurassic World Evolution 2 from now on. Except for Battle Royales that is, because we'll keep the focus on them. But from now on, on every ep episode of Jurassic World Evolution 2, I want to do a little challenge. From spotting a different dinosaur in the background of a screenshot, or identifying a dinosaur by its calls, or just um, identify them by say their teeth now hope you enjoyed and i will be showcasing this first image of the forest and ooh, and hopefully you guys will be able to tell me in the comments below which dinosaur is in the background of this image and the first thing that i want to discuss is these rows of planters and rows of trees that adorn Malta's desert. Because, funny enough, we now can do what I tried to do on my Manticore Island b build video that I did a few months ago, but this time we'll be able to do it better. Because as you can see, these trees are imposters, not matching to what we had seen in Malta before, which if we just um, zoom over there where there's two Dreadnoughtus who are probably scared to death of that Giga that is also there, which I think he's actually attacking one of them right now, which... Oh, yep, he is attacking one of them. Oh, man. Anyway, before I get distracted on that, we now can have the scenery trees from all of the biomes in every map. So as you can see, row number one features the lovely jungle forests of Isla Nublar. The next one is the t temperate forest of Pennsylvania. Then, if my memory serves me correct, I can't remember what biome it was exactly, but these are the trees from Germany, which is very nice. Then we have um, the redwood trees, which I cannot remember which one they classified them as, but it's mainly the redwood forest, so that's right, guys. We can actually fix Isla Sorna's map without having to get a whole new map, although I still would appreciate if they did release that. But, moving on, we have the um, desert trees as well, which fit actually quite nicely here already in Malta, but, you know, we even have the Biosyn trees here, which is awesome, I must say. I love these trees, and they actually look quite... They fit... I don't know why, they have a... Quite a nice appearance here in the Malta environment, but maybe that's just me. And then, of course, the last lot on the line is a, a, a giant wall, but no is the Malta trees themselves. And they are all here, including their planters. So that means, like, say if I want to have um, only, um, I don't want to just use the tall trees from all the other planters, but I'm on um, the map that normally would have those, I can also now use these little guys as well, and they'd match beautifully with all the other scenery items. And, of course, we can make um, biomes in other biomes as well, so if I want a jungle enclosure and it's a wintry landscape, I can do that, just as an example, though I probably wouldn't do that unless I had a proper reason, but you get the point of this. All these trees can be used everywhere, but also if we go over here, you may notice that we have some other specialty items. First of all, we have the um, new um, viewing galleries that are for the log and the um, dome, which I'll be showing you those very shortly. But as you can see, the entranceways that connect to their underground tunnels, which, fun fact, I think this is supposed to be a nod to Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, especially the viewing tunnel, because, well, those were... Um, the tunnel was actually... 
um, part of Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. You could put viewing domes in the parks there, and then you'd connect it by an underground tunnel with a little entrance that you just put anywhere in your park. And these are in reference. As you can see, we have a Jurassic Park variant. We have a DFW version as well, which also, gotta say, I love that little painting of the log, actually. And also, that, I believe, is a Brachiosaurus, which, that is actually quite beautiful, even though it's not connecting to the log, I think, but which you can see there. And, of course, the Jurassic World variant, which actually I love these um, T-Rex domes like that just give. Oh, and the Stegosaurus, too. That just is, like, awesome, man. Like, we've wanted... I know a lot of JPOG fans have wanted the domes especially, but, of course, for me, I wanted the other one more. But since JPOG just um, had it, celebrated its... Um, um, 20 year anniversary, if I'm not mistaken, I guess we can celebrate. And also, so, as you can see here, we have the zip lines, which these are the two new versions that we are getting, which the one on the left is, of course, the Jurassic Park version, and on the right side, we have the DFW, and of course, we also have the Jurassic World variant as well, but, sadly, we do not yet have a Camp Cretaceous version, which hopefully we get in the future. I, I think that, with enough um, poking and prodding by us, we'll get that along with the rest of the Camp Cretaceous stuff we need. And also, this just shows that they are willing to listen to the fans a lot more than I feel they did in the first Evolution game. Because there were a lot of things that we wanted there that we weren't getting, like certain dinosaurs from the movies. Like, that's just me but they have definitely been improving but as you can see there we have hotels but that is actually um right after this next thing but more importantly we have the two new viewing areas the tyrannosaurus rex kingdom viewing log itself is finally here nearly eight years after jurassic world released and uh four Four to five years since Jurassic World Evolution 1 existed, we finally have the viewing log. One of the most popular viewing attractions in Jurassic World for both the universe itself and for fans. And my favorite viewing gallery of all time, which definitely I will be using this a hell of a lot. And probably as soon as I finish uploading this video once it's fully edited, I'm probably going to remember to add this to my T-Rex Kingdom in Jurassic World. And I may even, actually, you know what? I may actually go there right now. So let's um, skip back to there and let's go do it. And here we are, folks, in our Jurassic World recreation, which, oh boy, the uh, frame rates are uh, lacking a little bit, which also, guys, I just have to say, we're definitely gonna have to make some updates in this. I may make a speed, I may make a tour comparison video for like this version and then update it with all of the updates because I have not touched this map since back in June before Jurassic World Dominion's release. It has been that long folks since I've touched it but I just touched it right now with the latest edition which is of course as you can see for the red line here we have the viewing log in the T-Rex Kingdom, which also I'm going to actually connect right now to, uh, let's just, uh, go right there, because I need to change this, right, and, uh, wow, that's appeals already. Now let's, um, no, 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 let's, um, take a look at the view, let's, uh, change it, can we see the T-Rex? Okay, I can, oh, he just ran past. He just ran past, and which Rexy is it? Is it, um, oh my god, it's it's still the 1993 one. I haven't added Rexy with scars yet. Oh boy, this, it, wow, that's clearly been a while, guys. But, yeah, just look at that. Apart from the, um, shaky uh, frame rate, that just looks so much better. Just the fact that the tree log is there in the background, it, it's, it's amazing. Like, I, I don't know what to say, like... We finally will be able to recreate, like, the T-Rex Kingdom properly. I'll probably actually, like, remodel this entire enclosure now. Because, like, it is pretty accurate to the game's, um, c 
current ability, but uh, there's definitely a few things that I want to change with this entire park. Like, trust me, guys, this I'm going to be doing a tour video of this, and it will be a comparison of how it looked now, which, get a good look at this park, guys. Like, look at, it looks great. Don't get me wrong. For when I built this, this was awesome. Like, if you want to check out the series that I did on it, please um, go and look in my playlist section, and you will find my recreation of Jurassic World. I apologize for the crappy thumbnails, but I was um, a younger and more dumb YouTuber at the time. But now that we've had our fun with the viewing log in our Jurassic World recreation, I think it's time to move on to the JP... JPOG fans version of a viewing vent, which is now the viewing dome, which of course is from Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, and it looks very similar if I'm not mistaken. I've never fully played JPOG 2, and this one looks just as awesome, and of course this one can go inside the enclosures as well, and this thing just looks absolutely beautiful, and if we, um, just, uh, teleport away to over there, where a Dreadnoughtus group and two Gigas live, can we see any of them? Oh, yes we can, we can see a Giga walking up towards the Giga, oh no! I mean, not walking up towards the Giga, walking up towards a Dreadnoughtus, actually, he might be going for one of the other two, he's ignoring, uh, this one, but if we head here, we can actually see ha just how good these two viewing vents look inside of some enclosures, and also, I must say, these guys just look beautiful, and also, this guy's clearly been suffering, one of these gigas has clearly been attacking me, he's, he's like, I, I thought I was your favorite, which, which also lets him, before I, oh, well, it looks like I'm gigas going for them again, Oh, ooh, a snap of the tail, but if we um just uh, head back into capture mode, you may already see in the woods a viewing log, which already is set up very nicely and actually looks quite well. It fits very well. Like, all you need to do is just put um, some foliage around it, and it looks absolutely stunning as a dinosaur could walk back. And I know what you're thinking. Why do I not have a T-Rex in here? Well, because I figured, let's go with a contrast. Let's show it with other dinosaurs, other apexes. So I went with an adversary of the T-Rex in the Jurassic franchise, the Giganotosaurus. Sorry guys, I got lost in the map. I was going the complete opposite direction. But, as you can see, in here, in the Giganotosaurus' enclosure, there be a viewing vent, all connected, all operational, and all empty, because apparently nobody wants to come in here and see the Giga. But, that is not all we have for the free update, guys. There are quite a few things. If we actually head back all the way over here, we'll actually, um go past these two, and if we look right here, we'll see a new scenery item, which has garbage bags and compost bins. And I know what you're thinking, is this really worth talking about? Yes it is, because it actually just makes the park a little more alive. Like, you can just park this around a little building hub, at the back of one of them, and it just is like, yeah, this is a good pickup spot for a jeep or someone to come and pick up and deal with. And, of course, if you're wondering where to find it, because there was a little bit of a trick for this, although I found it by accident, if we go into decorations, and, of course, into the facility items, if we just look at this right now, you'll see that the um, trash bins are nowhere to be found, which creates quite the puzzle. How do you find them in here? Well, it actually turns out that they have remodeled one of the other packages. So, if we go on to supplies pile number one, as you can see in front of you, it is now the garbage slash compost bins with the barrels. Although they haven't changed the picture, it is now this one. And as you can see, it is no trick, whereas the rest of them are all the same. And it's quite interesting to see that they have decided to change it. Also, they've actually remodeled this um, supplies pile number two as well, because if you look at the white containers, there's two bottom rows with one top row, but this one's been changed to some boxes or bins just um, being knocked over, which is very interesting. So actually, there's a little other bonus thing. I don't know if that was um, 
there before, but now you know. And there we go, we got those. And also, you may notice that there is a lot of open space on this map. Because if we go all the way up, you will see that we have these square maps that are introduced to Jurassic World Evolution 2. Now, this map was already plenty of big, and this is also Malta, just to let you guys know. As you can see, there is the city of Malta, which also, you can instantly tell that we... This map has been stretched out because we are much closer to the city than we were before. Because if I'm not mistaken, this section right here, like around here, was I believe what the um, original map was. But now we can get all the way right up to here. Like this is as close as we can get now to Malt, to city, and also the Malta Harbor over there. Which is quite interesting. Now I know that some people will complain that there's that open space that is just over here. Which is not the end of the world, guys. I mean, come on. We've got like this massive map. And there are also so many others which I will transform to you. Well, I will transport you now to see. Okay, guys. Here we are on the main page for, to showcase the um, new maps. Which if we go into Sandbox... Of course, as you can see, we have the first one showing square levels, which of course are large, and it allows you to choose from a variety of biomes and build without limits in an expens expansive open landscape. Now, it's not actually unlimited, but as you can see, we can already guess some of the maps we have. On the, I believe um, the first one is Pennsylvania, then Isla Nublar, then I think California, and then I think Canada. Which, let's see if I'm right. Alright, so now, as you can see, it shows nine options. Which, this is actually due to if you have all of the um, DLCs. Because I know that um, one of these is actually for the Biosyn, for the Dominion DLCs. Both the Malta one and the Biosyn one. So, realistically, we would only have six if I didn't have any of those updates. Because, but we have Bios, Biome Tropical Isla Nublar, we have Alpine California, Biome Desert, which I believe this is to be San Diego, which, actually, you know what? I'm not too sad about, because actually I have not touched that map since the game actually came out, because I didn't really like the shape of it. It was like, it was a good size, but I didn't like um some of the... um. Sh spots on it, I guess. Then we have the, um, Biome Temperate, which is, um, Pennsylvania, I believe. Or, actually, since it's showing, it's not actually... Hmm. I don't think this one's Pennsylvania, guys, because it's not in... It's not actually in the right spot, actually. I think that might be... Well, the flag shows it to be Germany, actually, but that's not the Germany biome. Those... Those trees are from only the Pennsylvania map in campaign. So, I get... Oh, I guess it's an autumn version of um, Germany. Okay, okay, I see. I can... It's not that it's a bad thing, guys, but I wasn't expecting it to look like that. Then we have Biome Temperate. Oh, no! Oh, there is... A, oh, it's Germany with two different um, seasons. Okay, that is awesome. Okay, I did not expect that at all, guys, but yeah, we've got um, a normal weather, like springtime, summertime, then we got autumn, that, okay, that just won me over. So actually, yeah, there's um, two versions of that map. Then we have Canada, which Canada is probably one of my favorite maps personally, as a Canadian myself, I should love it. But it, I will admit, it was very small, which is why I moved to other islands. It's not my favorite all-time map, but with this inclusion, it's probably going to be up there. Then, of course, we have the Biosyn Sanctuary, which it was already big before, and it's even bigger, folks. Now, I'm hoping that um, this one doesn't take away the Biosyn Dome, because if it does... I will be very disappointed in this map, because I love having that in the background, and if it's not in the background, I will be disappointed. Oh, we have all- oh yeah, also from the Dominion Biosyn expansion, we have Sierra Nevada, also known as Discount Canada, because if you didn't know, these 
the scenes in which are for Owen Grady's ranch and such were actually shot in BC, Canada, British Columbia, for those who don't know, which... Unfortunately, I was not able to witness um, such experience there because I was unfortunately in a different province. But, you know, it's nice to have Canada be a p true part of the Jurassic franchise now. And, of course, the last one that we were previously on just before this, the Mediterranean um, Malta map, which, I mean, just, these are all awesome, guys. Like, they are going to be the best to use, and while I will miss the creativity of um, some people's parks from when they didn't have the map limits, I hope to see them more. Also, one more thing before we leave, if we um, head down to um, maps down here, if I'm not mistaken, there was another one added as well, which is um, the um, Sandy, the uh, Biosyn, not the Biosyn one, that was there before, but also the Malta ones. But for this one specifically, which I don't know if this is um, the same with the other one. Yep, it's just this one. For San Marie Bay, this map has actually been modified as well. While it doesn't have a square map, it does have a um, standard layout and also an expanded layout. Which means for people who enjoy this map but didn't enjoy the um, limited space... Here is your answer. Although I will say this one is one that is quite disappointing to me, because as you can may clearly see, the expanded layout unfortunately takes away from what made this map truly awesome, which was of course the open natural lagoon. That is what we wanted from this map. It's something that we wanted for the game for since the game came out, because we didn't want to make those oversized pools. But, I guess for those who just like the look of this map and don't care about that, this will be perfectly fine for them. I myself will probably just stick with the standard layout for this map specifically, but who knows? Maybe I'll give it a try and may maybe I'll change my mind. But that is it for the maps, and we'll just head back right now! And now that you guys are back here in the lovely city of Malta, I will take you to one more thing that I have to show you. I'll show you in the aviary, because those of you who are good at finding little glitches in the game that make this game a thousand times more better, you may recall that we had to do a little secret technique to get pterosaurs out from the exhibits, other than them just breaking out, of course. Because if you wanted to before this, you had to do this little trick. First, you actually had to go into a regular hatchery, such as this one, then you would have to go into filters, select new, and as you can see, it would show no, no results found. And currently it's showing the last dinosaur that I was highlighted on, which was the Dreadnoughtus. Now, if we go back to the aviary, then you would have to click this and then say, I want a uh, Quetzalcoatlus. Let's um, highlight him. We exit out, and then you would go back to the hatchery. And then, as you could see, it would show Quetzalcoatlus. And then you would incubate it and all that, and I'll give it a second. But as you can see, once we hatch this thing out... Now, of course, there is the it phasing through, but as you can see, the Quetzalcoatlus is roaming the skies, and also probably people should be scared out of their minds. But actually, they're not, and he's not even rampaging. Now, this was the normal way. However, Frontier has answered the call to make things so much easier. After many prayers and pleas from the fan base, if we go to the aviary, a simple yet excruciatingly desired detail has been added. Because if we go to this Quetzalcoatlus, you may recall before this update that it stated that you could only release a dinosaur, which would of course be in the aviary, but now it says release via airlift. Now you may be thinking, well this must be similar to how the lagoons operate, like how you would transport one from the other because you didn't need um, a hatchery for them, but if I just go out here and just press boom, that Quetzalcoatlus is going to be brought out from here and be brought into here. 
Now also, I want to see how he actually does this. And for gosh sakes, my Giga is real. Also, fun thing, another quick thing while we're waiting, um, the hunting behavior between carnivores and the sauropods has been improved, so no longer will they just instantly start bleeding out after the first attack. They will actually be able to resist more, and if a carnivore is unsuccessful, they will wait a certain period of time longer to take them out. And oh my god, he just flopped forward, and let's see them bring him out. Of course, he's too big, but as you can see... The Quetzalcoatlus is being brought out before us. This is pretty awesome, guys. I still cannot believe this is happening. I've messaged Frontier and Jurassic World Evolution to Twitter page and also Instagram pages for so long. I never thought it would be happening. Even when they said that they weren't going to do it, they have done it. And as we can see, they are bringing him down. And he is going to land on the floor. And he is going to take flight in the open skies. Oh, and as you can see, look at that animation, though. That was that was a nice animation. I might actually um get that um for a thumbnail. But, as you can see, that is a new thing for the update. No longer do we have to do the little technical thing. Now we can just, um, hatch them in the aviary, and then just let them go here. And then we're all good. We don't have to worry about make... Say if we just want a park full of pterosaurs, but no dinosaurs. Now we don't have to do make a hatchery. All we have to do is just make the aviary once, and then just let them out. And of course, the Quetzalcoatlus is terrorizing the skies. I mean, just look at this, guys. The fact that now everyone will be able to have their pterosaurs out, and, like, it won't be so complicated. The, like, this is just awesome, guys. Like, the fact that I can just do this now, just... It's going to be awesome, like, for me. And I know that so many of you guys will, too. And also, he is going down for food, I believe. Or is he going to go back and land on there? But that is all for the free updates here at the moment, guys. And, ooh. Ooh, is he coming in here for... Ooh, ooh, he's inter... Is he interacting with them? I didn't know they could do that. Okay, is that a new update as well? I didn't know that, like, they would even notice each other. Like, I know that, like, when it's hunting one of them, like a Parasaurolophus or an Archaeonithomimus, I know it could do it then, but I didn't know it could do it now. Also, gotta say, I would love if, like, they could interact a lot more um, with the dinosaurs. Like, I'd love to see, like, some of the smaller Trinodons, like, land on the sauropods. That way we could get, like, the, a recreation of the shot with the Dreadnoughtus where we saw a Pteranodon, like, on its back. That would be so cool, guys. I don't know about you, but I, I want that so bad. They have the technology to do it, but who knows? Maybe we will get in the future. But, guys, I want to know what your thoughts are for this newest update. Are you a fan of it as much as I? Or are there some other things that you want to see? For me, personally, I'd love to see, like, a... River cru river Cruise added for one of the tour rides as well. You know I've always wanted that. Of course, some more behavioral traits as well. That would be appreciative. Also, oh, oh yeah, one more thing for behavioral traits. Dinosaurs that will be going in the bushes or um, in the water will also lift their heads to view over that. So say, for example, a um, Chasmosaurus goes into the water here, what it will do now, instead of like having its head under the water, basically drowning itself, it will actually lift its head as it, it recognizes that it's in deep water. Which also leads me to hope that they may do more with dinosaurs in the water. I don't know if this means that um, we'll see... Uh, oh, Giga's going after them again. I don't know if this means we'll be get dinosaurs swimming or, like, properly interacting with the water even more so, but one can hope. I'd love to see, like, a Giganotosaurus just, like, roll in the water, just, like, splashing and cooling itself off. Oh my god, could you imagine that? That would be so awesome. Frontier, next update, that's your primary goal. Forget dinosaurs, forget anything else give me the animation of a giga or t-rex splashing in the water i need to see it happen and of course guys i know that you guys have been focused primarily on these new dinosaurs as well but what do you think of the free update 
Also, there is a new thing with capture mode, which is cinematic mode. I won't play it for you guys right... Well, actually, I can play it for you, because as you can see, there is a new setup to this whole thing, which if we go to camera type, we can go manual, cinematic, which of course is leading us straight to the... Um, Atrociraptor Panthera it is, which, honestly, this will be really good for so many um, players of the game who do, like, little dinosaur documentary things. Like, I know that um, uh, Jurassic Resort on YouTube, great channel, go subscribe to him. You may know him as the guy who does um, species profiles for um, all the dinosaurs in both Evolution 1 and even Evolution 2. Oh, we got the goat today. But he also does um, some national dinosaur um, videos where he basically follows a dinosaur around cinematically as it lives its life. He did it with Carnotaurus, he did it with um, Velociraptor, Nasudoceratops, and even I believe he did it with um, one... I believe he did it with Cryolophosaurus as well, and I believe this will probably help him a lot. As, oh my god, that just looks so cool. It was so ready for that. That was... Thank you, Quetzalcoatlus, for coming this way. That was perfect, man. But, anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it on here, because I think that this is all that is very important for the free update. I hope you enjoyed this little video, and if not, well, then I'm sorry that I failed you, but... If you want to see more for the channel, do hit the subscribe button to join the hunt. And of course, guys, stay safe. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.